Faith can move mountain. Radio Maria 91.3 FM. The voice of truth. I want to thank uh, <laughs> Radio Maria for this opportunity to keep having this conversation. You know, and uh, the truth is, uh, volunteering means so much to us. And uh, we know that if uh, volunteering in Nigeria is well managed, it can solve so many problems. You know, we've talked about this over and over again. And interestingly, Today we're having a special guest on these volunteers. Uh, the person in question is somebody, somebody really, really big in terms of volunteering in Nigeria. She she works with um, hundreds of volunteers and uh, she has influenced the lives of many young people in Nigeria. And uh, the person in question is Madam Veronica. She is the head of the UN volunteer in Nigeria. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Please, can we clap for her? <laughs> we are really glad to have you today. Yeah, Thank so, you so much. Yeah, so why we need to clap for her is that uh, this is her first external engagement this year. Yeah. So it shows how passionate uh, she feels about volunteering for her to come for this program when it's not convenient for her. She was able to create time to come for this program because she believes that we, uh, this platform promotes volunteering mm -hmm. and she needs to be here to support it. Please come back. Let's clap for her again. <laughs> volunteering is one of the vehicles that must be set in motion in order to direct the energy and potentials of young people in the achievement of the sustainable development goals. This is a quote by Veronica Ovi Wavy. <laughs> and that's you. <laughs> yeah. So, what does voluntary mean to you? Maybe probably we'll just want you to expatiate on that quote. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Good morning, Nigerians, and to any listener out there. Uh, my name is Veronica Ogilvy. I'm the country coordinator of the United Nations Volunteer in Nigeria. So, what I do is volunteerism. The next volunteerism and the third is volunteerism. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So, uh, you know, when he was reading, I thought he was going to mention something Mandela, uh, <laughs> the US second. Then when I saw, uh, I mean, I listened to so volunteerism is the vehicle that is to be set in motion. Mm -hmm. So achieve, uh, which is a vehicle to achieve, you know, um, the sustainable so development goals come 2030. Mm -hmm. I was like, that seems like my quote. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many quotes I've done and about this because um, since I started working with young people in the United Nations, uh, now he asks, what does volunteering mean to yeah. me? To me, uh, volunteerism is like what blood is to life. So wow. volunteerism is to development. Mm -hmm. Another quote is coming in. Wow. <laughs> Please, you know, so volunteerism is what blood, the air you breathe, mm -hmm. and the blood in your, your, your vein, your vein mm -hmm. what it means to you as a living being is what volunteerism means to development anywhere, wow. anytime, any day. And it is wow. not country bound. What it is in Nigeria is what it is in Everywhere. the US and just um, elsewhere. Wow. So um, volunteerism also is um, something that we must do if we want to succeed. Not just as individuals, but as a nation. Mm -hmm. And I would also want to say that for uh, for volunteerism to happen, there must be something called passion and compassion. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's a difference between being passionate and also being compassionate. Okay. Being passionate is you have the, you are just um, you know very interested in a cause. You want to drive a process. You are looking at where there should be a change. The late Miles Morel said, um, "You know, that if anything gets you angry, it means." that uh, you are being called to do something about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's where passion comes mm -hmm. into play, right? That when, it, when we talk about compassion, it means you show this empathy. Mm -hmm. You're also, you know, considering others. What if this person were, or if I were to be in those shoes? Yeah. So that also push you, you know? So it's not, passion is not enough. You have to be compassionate passionate. because that's where sympathy, your emotions, you know, comes into play and comes into play. So volunteerism is a lot and I, I think um, it's something, it's the way to go. And if you want to hear another quote, my listeners, it's also, <laughs> what, it's, it's the next boy well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. Well, it is, uh, well, 
I, I would like you to finish on that quote because I probably will take you on that. <laughs> okay, so you know, um, back then, as a young person growing up, yeah, volunteerism is the way to go. Begin to I, I think I now understand well. it clearly you. because I actually want to take you up on that when you say it's uh, the next year where I thought you were going to, uh, you know, uh, another direction. But what you just said is very true, and uh, I I quite agree with that hundred percent because if you look at the trend presently in Nigeria, you can see people are volunteering to not participate in their election. Nigerians have been very... You know, we would just like you to share a bit of your experience on what UN volunteer have been doing in, in Nigeria. Okay, thank you so much. All right, for UN volunteer in Nigeria, what we do basically is to mobilize our capacities. So within the UN system, we are a um, talent solution. So we, we try to galvanize, uh, you know, the energies, the strengths, the skills and experience of young persons, and sometimes no str no skills at all, mm -hmm. or no experience. Yeah. So we bring them together. We do both um, international mobilization, that bringing in persons outside the country to come contribute towards the mandate of the UN in Nigeria. And we as well also focus much more uh, in-depthly uh, on Nigerian youth, also looking at the, you know, high rate of unemployment, mm -hmm. we tend to give much, we, we actually prioritize national volunteers over international. That doesn't mean that international is not good yeah. enough, but what we even try to do is to bring both together and see how there can be a cross fertilization mm -hmm. of knowledge. Somebody is coming um, in um, to bring in some international experience, yes. and then we have a young volunteer far away in Medjugorje who they are seated in the same office. So there's a cross you know, fertilization of knowledge, I mean, knowledge, knowledge and, um, and experience. experience. Yeah. So we, we mobilize resources in terms of human resource for the UN. And it's it's just within the UN system. We have over 25 United Nations agencies in the country. And as I speak, we have about at least 100 minimum, we have about, let me say 109 to be very specific, volunteers who have been deployed to more than 15 of these UN agencies to support the different mandates. You see why I said, uh, it's a vehicle that must be set in motion mm -hmm. to achieve because the UN is all about the SDG. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have more than 100 volunteers to so different mandates, you have the UNDP, you have the WHO, you have the WMO, you have the UNSCR, you mm -hmm. have the UNICEF, so, you UNESCO, know, IMO, mm -hmm. UNESCO. So we have volunteers that are deployed to those different agencies mm -hmm. and they contribute to what those agencies are doing to achieve the SDG. So ours is all about mobilizing these young people trying to channel their energy and skills towards specific cause within the, the UN system. So I think that's very interesting. I was going to ask that, but let me see stay there. Like, what is the uniqueness? Um, what is, how is UN being different from the UNDP, UN, UNICEF, and all? What is the uniqueness? How is it different? Okay, first is, um, now, every volunteer that on board has come with a passion. Okay. And they've also come with compassion. Oh. Now I can um I can work to be paid, right? Mm -hmm. I I work to be paid, but a UN volunteer, yes, I wouldn't want to go so much into that. Except you ask me, a UN volunteer gets allowance and not salary. Mm -hmm. Now if I put them at par, let's say we have an international volunteer and an international staff, what they take home is not the same. Mm -hmm. So the uniqueness is a volunteer, despite the odd, beats the odd across the sea, the mountains, to come to Nigeria to contribute despite the little allowance. That's one. And then we provide a common service, unique in the sense that we are not just focused on a particular mandate, okay. but we, we tap into the different mandates of the UN system. So oh. if you are contributing to education, a volunteer is there. Okay. If you are contributing to eradicating poverty, a volunteer is there. If you are con if you are contributing to building the health of that good yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, good health, health and well being, okay. a UN volunteer is there. If you are talking about uh, you know improving the lives of refugees, mm -hmm. you know, a UN volunteer is there. So that's the uniqueness we are everywhere. I want to read this quote. President Buhari, in his forward to the national policy on volunteering, said. The federal government has been consistently making efforts to galvanize Nigerians to reawaken their commercial voluntary as a way of complementing or to strengthen government development strategies for the nation. If you look at this statement, it shows that um, the culture of voluntary has been there in Nigeria, but it seems it's dying. So, what would you say about the your own assessment of the Cultural volunteering and you are how can it be improved? All right, thank you so much. So when, uh, when it comes to volunteering, like what the UN does, we came to also the government mandate. We work with the government. 
Now, when we look at where we're coming from and where we are now to where we're going, mm -hmm. uh, so much has been done, yet so much has not been done. <laughs> so it just both me. So much has been done. So much has been done in the sense that there's been some level of increased awareness, mm -hmm. right? And so much has not been done because looking at our context, we would have gone beyond what it is. And also looking at the capacity, the human resource, we could have tapped more into the pool of young people mm -hmm. so that they can, you know, um, sort of uh, direct their energies towards some positive things. So, um, so much also has been done because the government has been able to put in place the policy. Mm -hmm. That's the Nigerian National yeah. Policy on Inclusive Volunteerism. Yeah. That took over a decade to happen. Wow. So I would say, yes, it took over a decade. It was in the, um, in the shell for some time. We started the draft some more than 10 years ago. And in 2020, during the International Volunteer Day, the, the policy was approved by FED, the Federal Executive Council. Right. So it shows that um, the government is interested. And also, so much has been done because there's a Nigerian National Volunteer Service. Maybe one of the things I think you should also bring them on board the system because we work a lot with them, you know, um, back to back. We have close partnership mm -hmm. with them. So um, Nigerian National Volunteer Service happened. Um, it was um, instituted sometime in the 90s, yeah, in the, as far back in the 90s. And the whole idea was to look at bringing in diasporas you know, to contribute towards them and um, towards nation building, just to be very specific. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it, the government has been thinking, but then how do we improve on what we've been doing some 30 years ago? That's where um, we have the ch uh, um, challenges because volunteerism is happening at different levels. It's happening at different sectors, but then there are no measuring, you know, um, strategies. How do we measure the impact? Impasse, We've not right. been able to do that because for you to improve on anything you do, you need to, uh, you know, assess yeah. how well are we doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said so much done, so much yeah. not yeah. done yet. So if oh. we're able to assess the impact, it will take us to the next level on how we can build okay, so the I'll, entire infrastructure. Yeah. Thank I you. think uh, in, in line with just to raise, I, I actually wanted to know, you said the federal government is galvanizing. Mm -hmm. So in, since that bill has been signed, mm -hmm. what has been the major milestone in igniting or implementing that bill? Okay. between you, your organization, and collaboration with this government. All right. Thank you. And, you know, some of these questions, but I, I wish that they are listening on, the um, colleagues of NNVS as the Nigerian National Volunteer Service. And I think they might, and so, somebody might be listening. Somebody might be yes. listening. I'm just checking them out now. Okay, good. So I'm hoping that um, you find them here. Because why not speaking, because I'm representing UN volunteers. I okay. sit here. So why not speaking on behalf of the government? But to some extent, um, what we have looked at uh, as partners and stakeholders is capacity building. Okay. Because if you must run with a policy, you mm -hmm. need people who have adequate capacity, capacity to push and implement the policy. Exactly. So there have been capacity building at um, the stakeholders level, and they're looking at cascading to the different you know, um, levels across the state. Yeah. So there's need for more awareness and um, capacities. We've been able to build capacities, in, and then I think it was zone two, not even I think, I know, because I was in Kano, when it was done for the Northwest region and also the North Center I participated. So we're looking at the South, the South has even been done. We're looking at now Southwest and um, South South, you know, to get this, yeah. um, I mean, bring some of these persons on board. Yeah. So the basic thing they've been doing since the policy was um, signed and approved has been capacity building and more needs to be done. They're still in that um, process. I, I, I tried to ask that question on behalf of millions of young people who want to volunteer because most people have not heard about this policy and so their awareness mm -hmm. is not there so i feel that um the government would have taken up that uh, that aspect of publicity now uh, a state sorry i'm coming a okay. zone two zones have been you know involved in capacity building about three or zones. Three zones so and the public is not really aware mm -hmm. you so what is the recruitment you know uh process how do you get to select people to be part of this so i think people may like to also know how they can easily put their ears down to know about this but i'm sure millions of people like us are very interested in this okay. is this on behalf of un volunteers mm -hmm. or on behalf of <laughs> i'm not speaking for nnbs yeah, so I, I, I i am hoping that this program will be able to bring someone from nnbs on board I recommend someone okay. Okay. Uh, that you can. Uh, uh, so, 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 so let's take another yes. question. No, so that no, but I can ask for, I answer for UN volunteers. Okay. okay. Now, um, for UN volunteers, the, we have a pool where we, you know, you have young persons, whether young or old, because we have them at different categories. Mm -hmm. We have the youth volunteer, which is between the ages of 18 to 25 years. We have the 
um, national specialist or international specialist, which is from the age of 27. So you are just in um, some little changes in yeah. age, so we can you know categorize them mm -hmm. properly. That happened since 1st October last year. And then we have the volunteer experts. So we're looking at people who maybe had worked in the government, had, they were H, um, HODs of schools, they're rectors, but now they are retired and they're looking forward to still contributing. So we can put such people under the expert because they need 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this, so let me not scare the young people listening. The mm -hmm. youth volunteer is zero years, why, that you don't need any years of experience mm -hmm. to come on board. Why the specialist is at least three years, one to three years, you know, for them to come on board. So you can log on to our website, www.unb.org, www.unb.org, and you'll find the link to take you to the um, um, job opportunities. Um, the guys in the studio are logging on now, so if you have your Android phone or some sort of phone that, that you can use, just click on unb.org, and then it takes you, there's a whole lot of information there, and then it takes you to the link where you can also find job opportunities. There are several job opportunities, not just within the country, but outside Nigeria. So if you are a, a Nigerian who have got at least, um, say, three to five years experience to be at the specialist level, mm -hmm. you can, um, you know, apply for jobs to go to somewhere so, in Congo, for, somewhere for, in South Sudan. So we're, we're higher work. than the specialist level. We're higher than the specialist That's <laughs> no, what I want So if you have to, you know, um, bring us in, myself and Ovo. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what level? Because we have been in the domestic sector for the past 18 years, okay. you know, contributing in the area of education, uh, climate change, health, uh, uh, skill acquisition, mm -hmm. environment projects. In fact, water projects. <laughs> so much. <laughs> rural water projects, so, massive. I think uh, we, we need to go on a quick quick break. Okay. We'll come back, uh, we can continue that conversation, and then the phone lines will be open. We we'll also call the website again, so we'll be right back. Yeah, 081 084 47518. I take it again 081 084 47581. Somebody might be trying to dial the numbers, call it again. <laughs> 081 084 47581. All right, thank you. So, yeah, we're still having a conversation with the head of the UN volunteers in Nigeria and uh, uh, who, she's somebody who has influenced the lives of many young Nigerians positively. Um, so if you want to be part of this conversation, you have a question to ask, you could call 081-084-47518. So don't call and ask uh, some questions that cannot be answered on, on air, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, um, uh, before we continue, I will, let me take on that quote. Service never goes out of fashion. This is by Rohama Ifeo. She's a former coordinator of the Yali Network, Lagos. We have a call? Okay. Hello, good morning. Yes, your name, where are you calling from? Hello. Okay, we have another call. Yeah, hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Your name, where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from uh, Abuja. Your name, Lube please? Airport Road, precisely. I'm Jaffet, my name. Oh, Joseph, glad you are here. Jaffet, okay. Yes. So, what's your contribution? Yes, my. Yeah, my. So. Uh, uh, the desire to be a volunteer for this UN uh, program. Mm. I am a specialist in uh, rural water uh, provision. I've been into water, power water system for over the 10 years that I've had, since after my graduation from the school. So how can I participate in the volunteer uh, program? Okay, thank you. Ma, yeah, the question's to you. All right, thank you so much. And thanks for wanting to be part of what we do. We really appreciate that. Um, all our volunteer jobs are advertised, like a real job advert. And then you'll find them on our website, not on the newspaper, but on the website. I just mentioned in the last um, um, the section we just had, I talked about the website, which is www.unv.org www.unv.org. You can always check the website. 
Beyond Nigeria, you'll find other um, job opportunities, not even in the country. So if you have so much experience and you you, you feel you want to also um, contribute to what other countries are, are, are doing, just like we have internationals in Nigeria, you can as well apply. The website um, has information both for national job opportunities, as I mean, volunteer opportunities and also international. So www.unvrada.org, www.unv.org familiarize yourself with the website and you find links to the job adverts. Thank you. Okay, so we have another call. Yeah. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Volunteer Hours. Okay. Okay, so let, let me just uh, answer this quickly. Uh, Ma'am, so um, how is the UNV helping to support volunteers around the world? Are there policies, uh, that guides uh, operations around the world. For example, uh, I want to say this, right? Um, there was a research that was carried out here in Nigeria, uh, and then this of it uh, included some part of Africa that identified that uh, volunteers go through challenges, you know, and uh, one of them is financial resources, transport and distance, safety and security, working conditions, poor communication from uh, the places they volunteer with and all that. Then, as well as social isolation and abandonment, you know, people feel like once you're the part of volunteering, like yeah, there's somebody who don't who, who actually don't have a focus in life. So, how is the UN volunteers helping to shape these experiences for volunteers around the world? Okay, thank you so much. Now, uh, interestingly, there are over one billion volunteers around the world. And uh, what we try to do, because we are seen as the model when it comes to volunteerism. Yeah. And first, we, we, we try to put our own house right, because you cannot um, give what you don't have. So we have um, succeeded in having policies in place, and policy documents in place, and um, operational guidelines on how volunteers should be treated, their rights. And one thing we try to do also is to integrate volunteers into the agencies, like the UN agencies where they're working. So they're not standing alone. For just saying, um, for example, what you think is good for the the girls is mm -hmm. good for what the yeah, yeah. right? So now we, we we try to ensure that volunteers are now isolated in workplace. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the UN before I start talking about um, what we're doing um, globally. So we we try to ensure that whatever policy documents okay. on place to okay. Sorry, it seems we have a call. Hi, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. What's your name? And where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Samuel Abu from Agoyeju Odo in Kogi State. Okay, so what's your contribution? Yes, like, I don't know exactly what is going on now. Okay. Okay, so it's just stay on. Which program are you on? Now? Which program are you on now? We're on volunteers' hour. Just stay okay, on. Okay, just stay on and listen. Back. Yeah, listen. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, sorry, 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 I'm not with my radio. That's why. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I will go to the radio now. Okay, another call. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Brian Mojan I'm calling from Kabusa. Okay, what's your contribution? And my contribution is obviously, uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the madam for the lightness that she gave us this very morning. So, obviously, I'm a health education specialist, certified health education specialist. Okay. So, uh, so I'm very happy to hear all what she says. But I think I, I'll be one of the first people that is going to apply for the uh, UK, UK. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. So uh, we're, we're almost running out of time. <coughs> Excuse me. So but, uh, volunteering has been a tool for social development in a 26 ish he applies to, for a job and they will tell him that um, you need three years experience and the person must not be more than 27 years and you left uh, and you finish around 26 you know so and it's a challenge and um, part of what we advocate here yeah, through our program is that young people should engage in volunteering very early to um, bridge that gap so uh what, what what's your take take on that yeah, and that's really perfect. And that's what in my own um, little way I tell people. 
Well, the first to make us married, so I want to work for the UN, or I, can, I want to come on as a lone volunteer. And what I advise, like you rightly said, is look out for smaller NGOs, because that was how I started as well. Yeah. Look out for where, um, you know, nobody will chase you away. Go find out what they're doing. You can also browse, also think about what are you passionate about? Is it women empowerment, gender equality, mm -hmm. and all that? Look out for those NGOs that have those kind of focus and key in into what they're doing. Go up to, you may not need to go on Monday to Friday because mm -hmm. of the finance, yeah. but maybe once, twice a week, you can, you know, pop in. even as a student in the university, you can also pop in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes also, even when you're on break, just like the school has been on strike for some time now, you can also, you know, um, connect with some of these NGOs and contribute to what they are mm -hmm. doing. Not maybe in very big um, magnitude, yeah, yeah. but you must be doing something rather than sitting. Because by so doing, you are picking up new skills and mm -hmm. those experience will count for you. Yeah. So I support what um, he has just mentioned, that uh, for you to get that experience, you need to start doing something. And um, like development organizations are one of the ways to start. You can't go into the bank and say you want to volunteer. You won't go into show and say you want to volunteer. But you can look out for development organizations, whether local, I mean, community-based organizations, faith-based, national, um, you know, what's it called? Um, NGOs, mm -hmm. non-governmental mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. even international organizations. You can look out for some of these organizations and write to them, walk up to them, tell them you want to volunteer, and contribute to what they are doing. And there are many, there are diverse NGOs you can mm. contribute. And you pick up new skills and gain experience. So when you are leaving school, you already have some experience to, to go sure. by. And that's what that's what makes the developed world different from the developing countries. Abroad, everybody, even in school, mm -hmm. they find a way to you know volunteer yeah. and contribute. A, a lot of persons are doing some stuff. Sometimes I look at like the international um, volunteers coming on board. Sometimes I look at their CV and I realize that their experience is what they were doing, supporting the school administration to bring on board or settling other, I mean, students mm -hmm. while they come on board the campus. Mm -hmm. That is volunteerism. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting. So we're well, about running up, but I, I, I want to say this, right? Part of the research I did, I talked about, right? And uh, reviews the reason why people volunteer. And one of them is interesting. So I will mention the other number ones before I go to the last one. Now, one is that people volunteer to solve a problem. The others volunteer to support a cause. Some volunteer to gain knowledge, which is part of what we're discussing. Some volunteer to develop a skill. Some volunteer to leave a legacy. Why some other special category volunteer for fun and network? Have you experienced that before? <laughs> what, what would you say about that? I, in fact, interestingly, I'm agreeing to everything you're saying today. <laughs> I thought there would be something I wouldn't agree I to. Uh, yes, for phone and networking, yes. I, I picked that because it looks uh, weird. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like I came here, I volunteered to come here. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's to network. <laughs> yes, and also to have fun. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, because um, when it comes to volunteerism, you know, I mentioned passion. Yes. So you, you're gonna you're doing what makes you happy. happy. That's yes. the fun part mm -hmm. of it. Yes. And then when you see that lives are changing, I have some volunteers, you know, people call them from communities to say, we've not seen you today. Are you not coming? Stuff like that. That makes them happy. Yeah. It means that they are recognized mm -hmm. and the job they are doing or what they are doing in those very little communities that seems like nobody sees them. Yeah. And then for networking, because on the platform of volunteers, you get to meet people. Mm -hmm. You get to meet like minds. You get to also know that you have... Other people who uh, are thinking the way you mm -hmm. are thinking, so you're not alone in that journey of volunteerism. So that is indeed for fun so and networking. The last question <laughs> we will take. I don't. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. The last question, probably the last question from me, is that so. It's very simple. At how do you, you know, break the gap between other organizations that are not under the how do you maintain that synergy? Do you sometimes work with organizations that are outside this? The UN structure. The yeah. UN structure. So if you, so like how many are already working with you? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, um, that's not a shock because when it comes to the SDG, the goal 17 talks about partnership. For the good. And there's no island. Yeah. yeah, we are United Nations, but we need people to drive the process. So for UN volunteers, we have partners as well, partners who are into volunteering. You know, we call them BIOs, volunteer-involving organizations. We work with them, and through the 
um, Nigerian National Volunteer Service. So we have even a database of these um, partners that we meet. We have um, normally quarterly stakeholders yes, meeting. meeting to meet and discuss on how to improve volunteer infrastructure in the country. So when you talk about um, when we talk about the policy, the mm -hmm. capacity building, these are partners we're working with. Okay. We're trying, we're, and sometimes we have also committed our resources to building capacity. So that's a way to also you know work with partners, yes. improve their you know capacity to deliver on building volunteer infrastructure. So we would not shy away from that. It's, we need them. We even need them much more than them. They yeah. need us. We have a very young volunteer uh, person in the Yeah, she, she, we want to give her opportunity to ask a question that is. I'm sure something is in her mind. Yeah. Um, I have loved everything that has been said to me, but I, I think what I want to hammer on, what I want to ask is, um, how to encourage more young people to volunteer? Because I started volunteering when I was in university. In fact, I kind of followed your rule. We had this as a strike, and I went to this organization that I saw was working on mental health. And I said, you know what, I want to, I want to do something. And it was the rapid learning experience. And then I went back to school and I continued with this volunteering experience. But it was, it was sort of seen as a, you know, people didn't see the advantage to it. Then they were like, you know, why are you during this doing this? Because it was also a sort of financial burden. You know, you have to pay for some little things and your transport. So I don't know how to encourage more young people, especially in universities, to see the beyond the um, difficulties, will I say, and to see like, because it's working well for me now. So to see the broad advantage of volunteering. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. And you've spoken so well. I can see that volunteering had made her, had made her more confident. Yeah. yeah. You know, she was articulate and then able to drive home her points. Now, um, the one way to do this is advocacy. Uh, creating more awareness. Just as we're doing. Yeah. Campaigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can come together and have some campaigns targeting young people on the need to volunteer. And in our campaign, it should be targeted because what I tell them also is what's, what's in it for them? Because everything, even even as a volunteer, we tell people that volunteer eats. They mm -hmm. go to the market as well. Mm -hmm. They want to buy stuff. You know, and that's where we have policies to let employers know that even if these guys are volunteering, mm -hmm. which is coming to, he asked a question, but because the call came in, we yeah. didn't continue. Uh, like what the UN is doing is having those policies that what we call the duty of care, that mm -hmm. these guys are volunteers, they're humans, mm -hmm. you know, so you need to go all out to protect them. You may not give them everything yeah, that yeah. they need, but at least let there be some level of allowances to encourage them, you know, something that will take them to point A to B mm -hmm. in the course of their volunteering assignment so we'll continue to advocate to young people tell them that when you volunteer uh, for every young person listening to me when you volunteer you're gaining experience mm -hmm. when you volunteer it puts you ahead of your peers mm -hmm. when you volunteer you become a champion and you are one person to be sought at, I mean, after, after in the near um, future when you volunteer you are gaining i mean picking up new skills and acquiring knowledge that you wouldn't have gotten if you were sitting down to so stand up and volunteer Wow, wow, that's a very, very point to end. Yeah. Uh, let's let's clap. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think we will have to make a request from her because she has just suggested a project to us right no, now. No, for, no, it's not my way. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to partner with uh, the UNB yeah. of programs. Mm -hmm. We're actually planning a volunteers conference mm -hmm. soon, so, so we'll see how we can work together. The f our focus is we, want, we we know how volunteering has changed our lives. And we're trying to encourage more young people to uh, volunteer because um, the truth is, government can't solve all problems. Mm -hmm. But if we apply ourselves properly, we as young people, we have an edge over those who haven't quite applied themselves. Mm -hmm. And volunteering is a platform. It has changed our lives, and we believe it, it keeps changing the lives of people. You know, so yeah, well, when, when the time comes, we're, we're going to reach out to you to have that collaboration. All right, Abuja. Uh, this is where we draw the curtain for today. My name is Orvo Tarigo, and with me is Comrade Success. Also with us is Fauzia Zakaria and uh, Rex William. Rex is the uh, media. media coordinator media. here. So it keeps all the all that we do here online for us. And uh, finally, our guest is Veronica Obuedi. She's the country coordinator of the UN Volunteers Program in Nigeria. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.